Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on Katia V5. This is following on from the previous tutorial on the sketch workbench uh, and today we'll be going through some of the 3D geometry. So what we'll be focusing on today is pads, pockets and patterns as well as holes uh, and a few other things as well. We'll also be delving back into sketching quickly uh, just as a recap. So we got our sketch here from the last time. I've made one or two very, very slight adjustments to it. Uh, first things first is we're going to pad it out. So I'm going to choose the pad icon over here. I'm going to create my selection as my profile as this sketch here, the sketch we did last time. And I'll delve a bit more deeply into this here. So it gives us a number of options, such as we can mirror it, we can reverse the direction. But we've also got uh, a selection of other um, options as well, such as a second limit. So we can have uh, two different um, sizes. We can also have a different uh, direction to pull it through. So at the moment, we can only pull it through X because we haven't got actually um, another reference for it. But if you have an axis which is at a slight angle, you can choose um, choose that instead. I will note now that if you right click on anything that has blue um, blue background, you can normally create something. So you can select something from here. So X, Y, Z. You can create a plane. You can create a line. And what it will do is it will take you into um, that directly and create it as an aggregated element on uh, on this. So it's just a way of doing it. Uh, I would recommend doing it uh, beforehand just so you've cr just so you've planned it correctly. But you can do that. So I'll keep mine quite simple. I'm just going to have mine at 50 millimeters, and I'm going to mirror it. So we've got uh, because I want my axis system here to be in the center of my body. So that's the basics of our body now. Um, it's always best, if you can, to create your entire part within a single body. Um, it's good methods and good good practice to always remove from a from a pad rather than create onto it. However, sometimes it's not that easy at all, um, and it is just easier to add things onto it. However, uh, it really is up to you in that regard. So first things first, uh, we're going to create the sketch for the pockets. So we're going to create a pocket in here and here um, to hollow this out, essentially, to make it lighter. Um, so I'm going to create a sketch. and I'm going to use the origin. The reason being uh, will come at apparent a bit later on in this tutorial. So it's always a good idea to have um, what you want to do in mind as you do it, but uh, essentially I'm going to freestyle this one a little bit. OK, so uh, this is our finished sketch. So what I've done is I've created a series of lines which offset 10 millimeters from the end. And what that will do is it'll allow us to create a, uh, a pocket within this. So we'll come out of here, and that's our sketch. OK, so we're going to create a pocket now. Um, so we select the pocket icon, uh, and we select the profile, which is the one we just did. Now, with exactly the same with the pad, you have several different uh, ways you can do it. So you can mirror it, you can reverse the direction. It's pretty much exactly the same as a pocket, only its operation is different. Pocket removes, pad creates. So what we're going to do here, because I've created it in the center, I obviously don't want to pocket out the entire thing, and I want to leave a thickness. So I'm going to create um, the, if I reverse the direction, I want the, uh, the depth of it to be the entire 50 millimeters, so it takes out everything. You can see that if I change it down, it will actually uh, it shows on this line here as I go up when it actually uh, hits this surface and goes through it. Even if I kind of go uh, go past it, it will show that it's hit that line and it's going through. That's just so you know if you want to know if it's hitting the surface. So I can preview it, and that's what I'll get. But I don't want it to go, like I said, from the very center. I want to have a 10 millimeter gap like I've got around here in the center. So what I'm going to do is we'll do the second limit and have that as 10 millimeter. So preview that and you can see it's moved now uh, the other way of what we want it. So what we want to do is put minus 10 millimeters and it's brought it back there. So now it's not in the center, directly in the center, it's offset by 10. So press OK. And there we go. That is our pocket. So there's our, uh, our our pocket then. It's a bit blunt. But before we do that, we want to do the other side as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mirror function. So we select our pocket. 
if we select the mirror function, you see here it's brought up a uh, object to mirror and a mirroring element. So we want to use the ZX, sorry, the ZY plane in this. And you'll see it pops it over to the other side. Click OK. Bam. We've got it on both sides now. So now it's it's pretty much identical on each side, which is great. So now what we're going to do uh, is I created a sketch to remove two, uh, part of this to create two lugs, uh, which is this one here. So I hide show that. It's just a simple rectangle, which again has got uh, on either side. So I'm going to use the pa uh, pocket tool again, choose that. And because it doesn't really matter, what I want to do is I'm just going to choose the limit bars because it doesn't really matter in this case what the depth is. It only matters that we've got both of them uh, taking out everything. You can see that's exactly what I want. And there we have it. That's the centre bit as well. So we're doing pretty well so far. What we do need now is a hole in the centre. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to define a hole, you use the hole function, which is fairly self-explanatory. However, the hole function will need to be positioned as everything else. Now, to do this, what I'm going to do is use a, a, uh, a point. So when we create a point, it's it's like everything else. It's got loads of different options. So you can create it by coordinates uh, on an actual curve or on a plane or on a surface, anything of these. To create it in the center of this whole uh, arc here, I'm going to use the circle, sphere, or ellipse center. And I'm going to select that one there. And you'll see it's now created a center point right there. And this will make it much easier for us to position our whole sketch. Click OK, and there it is. Now, if we click our hole, select the surface you want to put it on, it will bring up this menu here. So what we're going to do first is the positioning sketch. It will take us into the sketch here. Now, that, that is the point there where the V and the H are, where the hole is currently. So what we want to do is just click that one, hit the point we made, and constrain the two together so they're coincident. You'll notice the, uh, that hasn't moved, but that has. But you'll see the actual little point here has moved to there, which is showing you that it has moved. Bring it back out, and you can see that our hole here is moved to the correct position. Now, on here, we've got uh, several different, different options. We've got the diameter, which I'm going to set to 30. We have got uh, the depth. Now, you can either choose it to have blind, in which case you have the depth. In this case, it will go uh, like a pad or a pocket. Uh, you can choose however much it wants to do. You can choose a different uh, option here. So up to next, we'll take it up to the next surface it finds. Up to last, we'll take it up to the very, very last one, go all the way through. You can also choose up to a plane or up to a surface. So if I chose up to a plane and I chose the uh, right click and chose the ZY plane, it would go into the center, but all it's actually doing is taking away this. But you can choose that as well. In this case, it'd be much easier to choose up to last. Sorry, up to last. OK. And there is our hole. OK, so we've got our lug hole at the top there. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to create another series of holes at the bottom here so we can clamp it down. Now, instead of creating lots of holes, what we're going to use is a pattern instead. So first things first, we need to make the first hole. So we choose the hole function, we choose the surface. Uh, and this time I'm going to position the sketch manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it as normal. I'm going to double click the constraint bar because it allows me to do two at a time. And I'm going to constrain uh, this like so. So that's now constrained. If I come out of here, the hole is positioned correctly. I'm going to choose a 10 millimeter hole this time instead. Uh, up to last, but we can choose up to next. And click OK. Now, like I said, instead of using uh, doing another three of these, what I've done is I've created another sketch here, which is just three points. So one, two, three. The reason I created three is because we've already got the fourth here. So if we go to the uh, the toolbar here, which is the transformation features, 
we go to the, if you click the arrow here, you've got rectangular, circular, and user defined pattern. So rectangular is useful if you want to make a rectangular pattern, and circle is useful for making a circular pattern. In this case, we're going to use a user pattern. So what we do is we click on the hole, click on user pattern, and then click the sketch. And that does the, it creates the four positions like you can see. Click OK, and there we have it. Four holes, nicely done. Now this part is pretty much almost done, but before we uh, leave it, what we're going to do, as is good practice, is to make the features in here a lot more, uh, dress them up a bit. So the way we do that is on these parts here. So we've got uh, fillets and chamfer. I generally use fillets for internal edges and you use a chamfer for an external edge. So internal edges are ones like this, and external edges are one like that. Now not everything has to be chamfered, some things could be left, but internal sharp corners are, are generally a, uh, a big definite. So the reason we leave this to the end is because fillet allows us to use, uh, if we have a particular radius we want to use, we can use this particular operation for everything rather than having to do individual ones and this cuts down on the uh, design tree on the left and it will cut down on the size of the part so if we select the radius here it's and we select the uh, the corners I would say the corners you've got to select individually like so And then you can also choose a face. So that's got everything in there. If we click preview, it will show us what it's made. We can change the actual uh, size of it. Let's say go up to 10 millimeters and click OK. And there we have our fillet definition, which looks a lot neater. Now, if you were to want to change it, we've only got it on this pocket at the moment. If you do want to change it, you can then just double click it and start selecting more elements. So at the end of that, we've got all of the actual lines selected. Click OK, and there we have it. That is now nice and rounded. OK, so we've created all of our fillets now. Uh, what we're going to do is create a chamfer. So the chamfer is for the external edges generally. Uh, exactly the same way as you would do a fillet, so choose your edges, generally propagate out uh, and then choose either a length and a length or a length and an angle. So I'm going to choose in this case uh, three millimeters, see what happens, looks good to me. And there we have it. So we've gone today from a very fairly simple sketch, added two more sketches and we've created this entire part, which is fairly complex when it comes to, uh, to machining, but at the same time not too not too difficult to do. Before we go then, I'll make a quick mention of uh, the design tree here on the left. And uh, sometimes you can see here, anything that's got a line under it means that that is the, the work, uh, the, the object in work at the moment. And what that means is, is that what Katia sees is anything after this. So if I was to go all the way up to here, right click and go define in work object. You see, everything disappears. Now, everything's still there because it's, it's in the design tree, but it's not there at the moment because that's what I have in work. If we go down to the pocket, it shows the other side of the pocket, but just the one side because the mirror hasn't been done yet. Now, this, this, co this ties in as well that you can reorder stuff in this tree. And the reordering is very important in the solid modeling because it can make quite big differences. But I think that's going to be have to be a, a lesson for another time, I think. But just be aware that, the, that this can happen and that the order of it in the design tree does actually make quite a big difference. So there we have it. That's how you, uh, you can make an A-frame using very, very simple techniques. In the next tutorial, again, with 3D modeling, we're going to be going through some other functions such as shafts, grooves, uh, slots, and multi-section uh, multi solids, which are a bit more uh, complicated. We'll also be going through a bit more 3D geometry and uh, we'll get, get up to the speed before we start using surfaces. So 
I hope you've uh, this has taught you something today. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks very much. Cheerio.